Severt. Definition. And definition. Sitham definition of the severt. The C definition given by the International Committee for Weights and Measures, Sipam says, the quantity dose equivalent H is the product of the absorbed dose D of ionizing radiation and the dimensionless factor Q quality factor defined as a function of linear energy transfer by the ICRU. H equals QXD. The value of Q is not defined further by Sipam, but it requires the use of the relevant ICRU recommendations to provide this value. The SIPM also says that in order to avoid any risk of confusion between the absorbed dose D and the dose equivalent H, the special names for the respective units should be used. That is, the name gray should be used instead of joules per kilogram for the unit of absorbed dose D and the name severt instead of joules per kilogram for the unit of dose equivalent H. In summary, the gray quantity D absorbed dose, 1 J equals 1 joule slash kilogram, a physical quantity. One J is the deposit of a joule of radiation energy per kg of matter or tissue. The severt quantity H dose equivalent, one SV equals one joule slash kilogram, a biological effect. The severt represents the equivalent biological effect of the deposit of a joule of radiation energy in a kilogram of human tissue. The equivalence to absorbed dose is denoted by Q. I keep definition of the severt. The ICIP definition of the severt is, the severt is the special name for the C unit of equivalent dose, effective dose, and operational dose quantities. The unit is joule per kilogram. The severt is used for a number of dose quantities which are described in this article and are part of the International Radiological Protection System devised and defined by the ICIP and ICRU. External Dose Quantities when the severt is used to represent the stochastic effects of external ionizing radiation on human tissue, the radiation doses received are measured in practice by radiometric instruments and dosimeters and are called operational quantities. To relate these actual received doses to likely health effects, protection quantities have been developed to predict the likely health effects using the results of large epidemiological studies. Consequently, this has required the creation of a number of different dose quantities within a coherent system developed by the ICRU working with the ICAP. The external dose quantities and their relationships are shown in the accompanying diagram. The ICRU is primarily responsible for the operational dose quantities based upon the application of ionizing radiation metrology and the ICIP is primarily responsible for the protection quantities based upon modeling of dose uptake and biological sensitivity of the human body. Naming Conventions The ICRU slash ICAP dose quantities have specific purposes and meanings, but some use common words in a different order. There can be confusion between, for instance, equivalent dose and dose equivalent. Although the SIPM definition states that the linear energy transfer function Q of the ICRU is used in calculating the biological effect, the ICAP in 1990 developed the protection dose quantities effective and equivalent dose which are calculated from more complex computational models and are distinguished by not having the phrase dose equivalent E. Only the operational dose quantities which still use Q for calculation retain the phrase dose equivalent. However, there are joint ICRU slash ICAP proposals to simplify this system by changes to the operational dose definitions to harmonize with those of protection quantities. These were outlined at the Third International Symposium on Radiological Protection in October 2015, and if implemented would make the naming of operational quantities more logical by introducing dose to lens of eye and dose to local skin as equivalent doses. In the USA there are differently named dose quantities which are not part of the IGAP nomenclature. Physical quantities these are directly measurable physical quantities in which no allowance has been made for biological effects. Radiation fluence is the number of radiation particles impinging per unit area per unit time. Kerma is the ionizing effect on air of gamma rays and X rays and is used for instrument calibration. And absorbed dose is the amount of radiation energy deposited per unit mass in the matter or tissue under consideration.
Operational quantities. Operational quantities are measured in practice and are the means of directly measuring dose uptake due to exposure or predicting dose uptake in a measured environment. In this way, they are used for practical dose control by providing an estimate or upper limit for the value of the protection quantities related to an exposure. They are also used in practical regulations and guidance. The calibration of individual and area dosimeters in photon fields is performed by measuring the collision air kerma free in air under conditions of secondary electron equilibrium. Then, the appropriate operational quantity is derived applying a conversion coefficient that relates the air kerma to the appropriate operational quantity. The conversion coefficients for photon radiation are published by the ICRU. Simple non-anthropomorphic phantoms are used to relate operational quantities to measured free air irradiation. The ICRU sphere phantom is based on the definition of an ICRU-4 element tissue, equivalent material which does not really exist and cannot be fabricated. The ICRU sphere is a theoretical 30 cm diameter tissue equivalent sphere consisting of a material with a density of 1 g asterisk cm3 and a mass composition of 76.2% oxygen, 11.1% carbon, this material is specified to most closely approximate human tissue in its absorption properties. According to the ICUP, the acrosphere phantom in most cases adequately approximates the human body as regards the scattering and attenuation of penetrating radiation fields under consideration. Thus radiation of a particular energy fluence will have roughly the same energy deposition within the sphere as it would in the equivalent mass of human tissue. To allow for backscattering and absorption of the human body, the slab phantom is used to represent the human torso for practical calibration of whole body dosimeters. The slab phantom is 300 mmx 300 mmx 150 mm depth to represent the human torso. The joint ICRU slash ICIP proposals outlined at the Third International Symposium on Radiological Protection in October 2015 to change the definition of operational quantities would not change the present you. Protection quantities Protection quantities are calculated models and are used as limiting quantities to specify exposure limits to ensure, in the words of ICAP, that the occurrence of stochastic health effects is kept below unacceptable levels and that tissue reactions are avoided. These quantities cannot be measured in practice, but their values are derived using models of external dose to internal organs of the human body using anthropomorphic phantoms. These are 3D computational models of the body which take into account a number of complex effects such as body self-shielding and internal scattering of radiation. The calculation starts with organ-absorbed dose and then applies radiation and tissue weighting factors. As protection quantities cannot practically be measured, operational quantities must be used to relate them to practical radiation instrument and dosimeter responses. Instrument and dissymmetry response. This is an actual reading obtained from such as an ambient dose gamma monitor or a personal dosimeter. Such instruments are calibrated using radiation metrology techniques, which will trace them to a national radiation standard and thereby relate them to an operational quantity. The readings of instruments and dosimeters are used to prevent the uptake of excessive dose and to provide records of dose uptake to satisfy radiation safety legislation, such as in the UK, the Ionizing Radiations Regulations 1999. Calculating protection dose quantities. The CIVERT is used in external radiation protection for equivalent dose the external source whole body exposure effects in a uniform field and effective dose which depends on the body parts irradiated. These dose quantities are weighted averages of absorbed dose designed to be representative of the stochastic health effects of radiation and use of the CIVERT implies that appropriate weighting factors have been applied to the absorbed dose measurement or calculation expressed in grays. The ICAP calculation provides two weighting factors to enable the calculation of protection quantities. 1. The radiation factor WR, which is specific for radiation type, or this is used in calculating the equivalent dose HT, which can be for the whole body or for individual organs. 2. 
the tissue weighting factor WT, which is specific for tissue, type T being irradiated. This is used with WR to calculate the contributory organ doses to arrive at an effective dose E for non-uniform irradiation. When a whole body is irradiated uniformly, only the radiation weighting factor WR is used, and the effective dose equals the whole body equivalent dose. But if the irradiation of a body is partial or non-uniform, the tissue factor WT is used to calculate dose to each organ or tissue. These are then summed to obtain the effective dose. In the case of uniform irradiation of the human body, these sum it to 1, but in the case of partial or non-uniform irradiation, they will sum it to a lower value depending on the organs concerned, reflecting the lower overall health effect. The calculation process is shown on the accompanying diagram. This approach calculates the biological risk contribution to the whole body, taking into account complete or partial irradiation and the radiation type or types. The values of these weighting factors are conservatively chosen to be greater than the bulk of experimental values observed for the most sensitive cell types based on averages of those obtained for the human population. Radiation type weighting factor WR Tissue type weighting factor WT The second weighting factor is the tissue factor WT, but it is used only if there has been non-uniform irradiation of a body. If the body has been subject to uniform irradiation, the effective dose equals the whole body equivalent dose, and only the radiation weighting factor WR is used. But, there is partial or non-uniform body irradiation. The calculation must take account of the individual organ doses received, because the sensitivity of each organ to irradiation depends on their tissue type. This summed dose from only those organs concerned gives the effective dose for the whole body. The tissue weighting factor is used to calculate those individual organ dose contributions. The ICAP values for WT are given in the table shown here. The article on effective dose gives the method of calculation. The absorbed dose is first corrected for the radiation type to give the equivalent dose, and then corrected for the tissue receiving the radiation. Some tissues like bone marrow are particularly sensitive to radiation, so they are given a weighting factor that is disproportionately large relative to the fraction of body mass they represent. Other tissues like the hard bone surface are particularly insensitive to radiation and are assigned a disproportionately low weighting factor. In summary, the sum of tissue weighted doses to each irradiated organ or tissue of the body adds up to the effective dose for the body. The use of effective dose enables comparisons of overall dose received regardless of the extent of body irradiation. Operational quantities The operational quantities are used in practical applications for monitoring and investigating external exposure situations. They are defined for practical operational measurements and assessment of doses in the body. Three external operational dose quantities were devised to relate operational dosimeter and instrument measurements to the calculated protection quantities. Also devised were two phantoms, the I-Crew slab and sphere phantoms which relate these quantities to incident radiation quantities using the QL calculation. Ambient dose equivalent this is used for area monitoring of penetrating radiation and is usually expressed as the quantity H asterisk 10. This means the radiation is equivalent to that found 10 mm within the ICRU sphere phantom in the direction of origin of the field. An example of penetrating radiation is gamma rays. Directional dose equivalent. This is used for monitoring of low penetrating radiation and is usually expressed as the quantity H0.7. This means the radiation is equivalent to that found at a depth of 0.7 mm in the ICRU sphere phantom. Examples of low penetrating radiation are alpha particles, beta particles, and low energy photons. This dose quantity is used for the determination of equivalent dose to such as the skin lens of the eye. In radiological protection practice, value of omega is usually not specified, as the dose is usually at a maximum at the point of interest. Personal dose equivalent. This is used for individual dose monitoring, 
such as with a personal dosimeter worn on the body. The recommended depth for assessment is 10 mm, which gives the quantity H10. Proposals for changing the definition of protection dose quantities. In order to simplify the means of calculating operational quantities and assist in the comprehension of radiation dose protection quantities, ICIP Committee 2 and ICRU Report Committee 26 started in 2010 an examination of different means of achieving this by dose coefficients related to effective dose or absorbed dose. Specifically, 1. For area monitoring of effective dose of whole body, it would be H equals PHX conversion coefficient. The driver for this is that H asterisk 10 is not a reasonable estimate of effective dose due to high energy photons as a result of the extension of particle types and energy ranges to be considered in ICAP Report 116. This change would remove the need for the ICRU sphere and introduce a new quantity called a max. 2. For individual monitoring, to measure deterministic effects on eye lens and skin, it would be D equals PHX conversion coefficient for absorbed dose. The driver for this is the need to measure the deterministic effect, which it is suggested is more appropriate than stochastic effect. This would calculate equivalent dose quantities H lens and H skin. This would remove the need for the ICRU sphere and the QL function. Any changes would replace ICRU Report 51 and part of Report 57. A final draft report was issued in July 2017 by ICRU slash ICIP for consultation. Internal Dose Quantities The CIVERT is used for human internal dose quantities in calculating committed dose. This is dose from radionuclides which have been ingested or inhaled into the human body and thereby committed to irradiate the body for a period of time. The concepts of calculating protection quantities as described for external radiation applies, but as the source of radiation is within the tissue of the body, the calculation of absorbed organ dose uses different coefficients and irradiation mechanisms. The ICAP defines committed effective dose and as the sum of the products of the committed organ or tissue equivalent doses and the appropriate tissue weighting factors WT, where T is the integration time in years following the intake. The commitment period is taken to be 50 years for adults and to age 70 years for children. The ICAP further states for internal exposure, committed effective doses are generally determined from an assessment of the intakes of radionuclides from bioassay measurements or other quantities e.g. activity retained in the body or in daily excreta. The radiation dose is determined from the intake using recommended dose coefficients. A committed dose from an internal source is intended to carry the same effective risk as the same amount of equivalent dose applied uniformly to the whole body from an external source or the same amount of effective dose applied to part of the body. Health Effects Ionizing radiation has deterministic and stochastic effects on human health. Deterministic acute tissue effect events happen with certainty, with the resulting health conditions occurring in every individual who received the same high dose. Stochastic cancer induction and genetic events are inherently random, with most individuals in a group failing to ever exhibit any causal negative health effects after exposure, while an indeterministic random minority do often with the resulting subtle negative health effects being observable only after large detailed epidemiology studies. The use of the CIVERT implies that only stochastic effects are being considered, and to avoid confusion deterministic effects are conventionally compared to values of absorbed dose expressed by the C-unit gray gi. Stochastic effects, 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 effects. Stochastic effects are those that occur randomly, such as radiation-induced cancer. The consensus of nuclear regulators, governments, and the unseer is that the incidence of cancers due to ionizing radiation can be modeled as increasing linearly with effective dose at a rate of 5.5 percent per sievert. This is known as the linear no-threshold model Alenti model. Some commentators, such as the French Academy of Sciences 2005, Dose-Effect Relationships and Tubiana M. 
and Oringo, A. Académie des Sciences, and Académie Nationale de Médecine. 2005 www researchgate net slash publication slash 277 million 289,357 and Oxford University Wade Allison 2015 nuclear is for life p7980 ISBN 978 9 million there is general agreement that the risk is much higher for infants and fetuses than adults higher for the middle-aged than for seniors, and higher for women than for men, though there is no quantitative consensus about this. Deterministic Effects The deterministic acute tissue damage effects that can lead to acute radiation syndrome only occur in the case of acute high doses, 0.1 J and high dose rates, 0.1 J slash H and are conventionally not measured using the unit severt, but use the unit gray J. A model of deterministic risk would require different weighting factors, not yet established, that are used in the calculation of equivalent and effective dose. ICAP dose limits. The ICAP recommends a number of limits for dose uptake in Table 8 of Report 103. These limits are situational, for planned emergency and existing situations. Within these situations, limits are given for the following groups. Planned exposure limits given for occupational, medical, and public. Emergency exposure limits given for occupational and public exposure. Existing exposure, all persons exposed for occupational exposure. The limit is 50 MSB in a single year with a maximum of 100 MSB in a consecutive five-year period. And for the public to an average of 1 MSB, 0.1 SB of effective dose per year not including medical and occupational exposures. For comparison, natural radiation levels inside the United States Capitol are such that a human body would receive an additional dose rate of 0.85 MSB slash A, close to the regulatory limit, because of the uranium content of the granite structure. According to the conservative ICIP model, Someone who spent 20 years inside the Capitol building would have an extra one in a thousand chance of getting cancer, over and above any other existing risk calculated as 20 asterisk 0.85 MSV slash asterisk 0.1 SV slash MSV asterisk 5.5% slash SV. However, that existing risk is much higher. An average American would have a 10% chance of getting cancer during this same 20-year period, even without any exposure to artificial radiation see natural epidemiology of cancer and cancer rates. These estimates are, however, unmindful of every living cell's natural repair mechanisms, evolved over a few billion years of exposure to environmental chemical and radiation threats that were higher in the past, and exaggerated by the evolution of oxygen, metabolism. Dose examples. Significant radiation doses are not frequently encountered in everyday life. The following examples can help illustrate relative magnitudes. These are meant to be examples only, not a comprehensive list of possible radiation doses. An acute dose is one that occurs over a short and finite period of time, while a chronic dose is a dose that continues for an extended period of time so that it is better described by a dose rate. Dose examples. Dose rate examples. All conversions between hours and years have assumed continuous presence in a steady field, disregarding known fluctuations, intermittent exposure, and radioactive decay. Converted values are shown in parentheses. Slash is per annum, which means per year. Slash H means per hour. Notes on examples. History. The Severt has its origin in the Ranchin equivalent man rem, which was derived from CGS units. The International Commission on Radiation Units and Measurements ICRU promoted a switch to coherency units in the 1970s and announced in 1976 that it planned to formulate a suitable unit for equivalent dose. The ICAP pre empted the ICRU by introducing the Severt in 1977. The Severt was adopted by the International Committee for Weights and Measures, SIPM, in 1980, five years after adopting the Gray. 
The SIPM then issued an explanation in 1984 recommending when the Sivert should be used as opposed to the Gray. That explanation was updated in 2002 to bring it closer to the ICIP's definition of equivalent dose, which had changed in 1990. Specifically, the ICIP had introduced equivalent dose, renamed the quality factor Q to radiation weighting factor WR, and dropped another weighting factor, N in 1990. In 2002, the SIPM similarly dropped the weighting factor N from their explanation, but otherwise kept other old terminology and symbols. This explanation only appears in the appendix to the C brochure and is not part of the definition of the Sivert. Common C Usage The Sivert is named after Rolf Maximilian Sivert. As with every C unit named for a person, its symbol starts with an uppercase letter SV, but when written in full it follows the rules for capitalization of a common noun, i.e. Sivert becomes capitalized at the beginning of a sentence and in titles, but is otherwise in lower case. Frequently used C prefixes are the millisivert 1msv equals 0.1sv and microsivert 1msv equals 0.01sv and commonly used units for time derivative or dose. A dose. 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 Dose, or dose, dose. Regulatory limits and chronic doses are often given in units of MSV slash or SV slash A where they are understood to represent an average over the entire year. In many occupational scenarios, the hourly dose rate might fluctuate to levels thousands of times higher for a brief period of time without infringing on the annual limits. The conversion from hours to years varies because of leap years and exposure schedules, but approximate conversions are 1 MSV slash H equals 8.766 SV slash A, 114.1 MSV slash H equals 1 SV slash A conversion from hourly rates to annual rates is further complicated by seasonal fluctuations in natural radiation, decay of artificial sources, and intermittent proximity between humans and sources. The ICAP once adopted fixed conversion for occupational exposure, although these have not appeared in recent documents. 8H equals one day, 40H equals one week, 50 weeks equals one year, therefore, for occupation exposures of that time period, 1 MSV slash H equals 2 SV slash A, 500 MSV slash H equals 1 SV slash A, Ionizing radiation quantities. The following table shows radiation quantities in C and non C units. Although the United States Nuclear Regulatory Commission permits the use of the units Curie, RAD, and REM alongside C units, the European Union European Units of Measurement Directives required that their use for public health purposes be phased out by 31 December 1985. REM equivalents. An older unit for the dose equivalent is the REM still often used in the United States. One sievert is equal to 100 REM, 